One of the lenses we can use to look at this entire picture of human evolution is basic ecology. You recall back in the first two weeks of the course, we introduced this concept already in thinking about how natural selection operates in different environments and what's the relationship between phenotype and environment. In week two, we talked about ape ecology and actually what are the basic characteristics of the ecology of apes and how that differs then from humans and actually subsequent hominins who came to evolve over the last five million years. But throughout the Pleistocene especially, we can think not just of the ecology of these fossil hominins, but the process of ecological intensification how we've become greater and greater consumers of the ecology around us. You can think about that in the context of the transition from Australopithecus to Homo that we talked about. The increase in body size, if it corresponds to increasing locomotor efficiency, is one example of a trait associated with increasing ecological intensification. The ability to cover a larger area and therefore gain access to more and higher quality resources. The prioritization of the brain as a cognitive apparatus, something that allows humans to be particularly good at dealing with environmental challenges and solving environmental challenges through non-biological mechanisms, again can be viewed as a process of ecological intensification. The gradual increase in population size throughout the Pleistocene, the increase in terms of stone tool technology, the development of new stone tool types, that it recognize or allow for humans to basically specialize in terms of the kind of predators they're bringing down or the kind of produce they're acquiring, all represent forms of intensification, trying to extract more resources out of the environments we occupy. This lens allows us to not only understand some aspects of changes in Pleistocene human behavior, but how behavior has changed up to and including the present. Think about the world as it is today. Think about how intense our existence is on the planet in terms of our ability to extract resources out of the environment. That process of intensification continues all the way through the Pleistocene and all the way up to the present. That massive change in population size that comes at the end of the Pleistocene continuing to the present initiates perhaps the greatest evolutionary change in our recent evolutionary past, the origins of agriculture, which we'll talk about in a moment.